Hey everybody, we're stoked that you're enjoying Back to the Wild. These high concept mashup videos are tough, creatively and technically, but we love doing them and we love seeing how much you all enjoy them. We have our next one in the works, but they take a decently long time. So until we're ready to share that one, I thought you'd enjoy a little peek at our process. I'm Ben and this is the making of Back to the Wild. So first things first, I haven't used any mods for these. I don't have anything against them, and I can think of several that I would have loved to have. But so far, everything you've seen on our videos is straight HDMI capture from the Switch. Edited in Adobe Premiere, visual effects and text animations in After Effects, and color grading in DaVinci Resolve. Even though we've been fans of Machinima for a very long time, and have been in film and video production and post-production for almost as long, Stallhorse was our first crack at doing it ourselves. Working in games like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are a lot like shooting on set in some ways. You find a location, set the stage, and get all the pieces together and go. You don't often run into problems like having to fight off enemies while you're unarmed or accidentally aggroing guardians and getting blown up though, most of the time. The flip side to that is you can reload your save. Can't do that on set. Concept-wise, Stallhorse and Gerudo were much easier. Stallhorse was just a weird idea I had while replaying Breath of the Wild, and Gerudo was a suggestion from my girlfriend that worked out great since I already knew what was in Breath of the Wild and could build out the idea from there. With Tears of the Kingdom, though, we discussed the idea before I had a complete picture of what was actually in the game, so I spent most of my playthrough not only trying to find pieces to fit the story, but trying to find ways to make the story fit the available pieces. We had Robbie, who was kind of designed to resemble Doc anyway, and we had the building mechanic. When we started, that was about it. The more I got through the game, the more I realized we weren't going to be able to do a retelling of Back to the Future. I examined some possibilities with Terrytown and Pura, but both would have required having the DeLorean put into Breath of the Wild, and without extensive rotoscoping, that wasn't going to happen. So instead, I tried to lean a little bit more into the Legend of Zelda aspect of the story and flavor it more with Back to the Future imagery where I could. Dunking Link in the Hateno Die Tank was a bonus. The moment I knew this was going to work was when I discovered the auto-build ability. The Zonai devices weren't hard to get. If I wanted wheels, steering sticks, and flamethrowers, I could just go to a vending machine. The challenge here was finding the right metal pieces to build the car from, and with auto-build, so long as I found the pieces somewhere, I could potentially recreate them in a better location. The next challenge was making a car that wouldn't either catch on fire, get high-centered on a rock in the middle of the road, or make the game drop frames like they were going out of style. We ended up having to choose between these two models, and while Zonai DeLorean looked somewhat truer to the style, it was heavier, didn't go as fast, and we couldn't get the camera close enough to Link when he was inside, so we had to use the more generic one. Getting first-person view somehow is key to making these. In just about every game with a free orbiting camera, you can make your player character disappear by backing them up to a wall or object and orbiting the camera behind them. In Breath of the Wild, this was pretty easily achieved with dropping a square bomb and then crouching in front of it. Keep your finger off L1. Tears of the Kingdom removed this option but gave plenty more. What ended up working best for me was the big wheel. And to get the driving POV shots in the beginning, I had to build this dolly rig with a cart, wheel, and a stabilizer. It really felt like being back on set and figuring out how to make things work with what you have. Of course, on set, we're not usually attaching rockets to things and triggering them with time bombs. Two things I really appreciate about Tears of the Kingdom. One, it encourages creativity and experimentation almost all the way through. Two, although both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom have a pro HUD mode, Breath of the Wilds leaves your hearts and active effects visible, but Tears of the Kingdoms allows you to turn it off completely while not in combat, which makes it much easier to get these nice clean shots. When I was concepting, I actually had to take Age of Calamity off the table because of the HUD I couldn't turn off. She wasn't comfortable to sit on but she could move. I voiced both Gerudo and Stallhorse, but we also figured out that wasn't going to work with this. Link famously doesn't talk, at least not so we can hear him, in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, and every time we see Robbie, he has a text box over him. So instead of trying to fight against that, we went with it and created our own text box. Now he had to say whatever we wanted him to say. Mwahaha. <laughs> the Flux Core Pounder was the closest we could get to Flux Capacitor, so it had to do. Like everything that wasn't working quite perfectly, we turned it into a joke. The last scene with the car was definitely the most fun and I'm super proud of how it turned out. Getting all the camera angles we needed and needing to steer the car and swing the camera around at the same time led to some pretty funny mishaps. Once the edit was most of the way there, we needed to find music. It's hard to really appreciate a piece of music as iconic as Alan Silvestri's score for Back to the Future until you try to find a stock track that resembles it. 
And when you give up on that, you try to find something that at least gives the viewer a similar feeling. I spent a lot of my life looking for stock music for projects, and I can evaluate a music track pretty quickly. After listening to over 500 tracks from six or seven different providers, I had maybe three that worked. Would it have been easier to just use the music from the movie? Sure, but no one likes copyright strikes. Will we do more movie slash genre mashups? Of course, when they make sense or when they hilariously don't make sense. We don't know when or what they'll be from, but we're gonna keep doing them. We love movies, we love video games, and we're gonna keep doing this. Thanks for watching. If you have more questions on how we pulled this off, leave a comment and we'll answer. And if you haven't already, do the things.